Welcome to the course, Digital Storytelling. My name is Luca Peskoretz. Okay, here I want to show you this perspective warp. And for that, I was, tr I was trying to find a good, uh, <clears throat> uh, good example to use. Unfortunately, I couldn't find anything better than maybe this one here now, but I'll show you a few. Okay, so uh, this is the um, uh, Sinderman, uh, Sniederman house. I think it's Joy Sniederman from, um, so he's a client of Peter Eisenman. And this is, um, uh, this is a drawing for the house. I think actually the house was executed. It's one of these sort of early examples of deconstructivism because I think it's uh, original house sort of has, um, it's like a concrete frame and it's sort of a house inside a house. And this is just kind of one of them. Um, so without the intersection, um, but it's a drawing that I found. Uh, and I will just kind of I go here to image, uh, for example, to maybe mm, canvas size. I want to just increase the canvas a little bit. So maybe width goes to 200 and height goes to 150. Okay, so now I kind of made it a bit, made it a bit bigger. Uh, I would like to sort of, I want to show you how you can kind of distort this, uh, this image. But first I want to also do a bit of cutting out so you can, for example, uh, here in the, this is now a background, so you can unlock it, it becomes kind of a layer and I can just call it, uh, you know, um, house drawing, house drawing. Okay, I will also save this, save as, I can, um, so this same date, perspective, I will call it, um, what's the name of the house? Sniderman house, okay. Okay, uh, first I would like to actually maybe select this as an object. So I can do something like select object here. Let me see if this works. I want to just clean up a bit um, the edges. Mm -hmm. Ah, it kind of works, but I'll do it a bit manually. So I don't really want to cut up. I want to just cut a little bit around it. To have a bit less pixels that get uh, deformed. Okay, so kind of I'll leave just a very, very tiny, tiny kind of space around. Okay, so I selected kind of the whole. Um, um, mm -mm, to allow, so I can go under uh, select inverse, and now I can just press delete. And I basically deleted um, uh, deleted kind of everything everything around. And maybe this one I can just also um, yeah. So there are a few ways to do this. I mean, just actually this house drawing I can uh, duplicate it and just kind of say it as an original. But I can show you also how you can work in and do transformations in a non non destructive way. Okay, so if I go here on the house drawing. Um, I'm very slow, duplicate layer, drawing original. Okay, so this one you can maybe just keep for later. You can move it down and delete it. So we can distort this one. Um, but before we do the distortion, I can convert this into a smart object. So that's something I didn't show you before, uh, but it's very useful to know because I didn't want to show you too many things at the beginning, right click. Uh, onto a layer and you can say here, convert to smart object because this kind of icon here. Now, a smart object means that I can now transform it. So I can, for example, say control T and I can just transform this picture. For example, I can make it very small, enter. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think I should be able to transform again and go back. And I have them, um, so I didn't lose them. I didn't lose the resolution. Uh, um, and let me show you what happens if I do the same thing with um, with the house that is the drawing that is not in um, that is not a smart object. Let's see what happens. So first, Control T, and I make it very small. Enter, and now these changes are applied, and they are basically irreversible. Or so I cannot really. I lost information now. And then now when I want to go back, so control T, I want to make it bigger. I get a very 
a very crappy drawing also because I kind of compressed it. I lost information like pixels. Uh, and then when I go back, I, uh, I get a crappier, crappier image. Or, so the first, this one that I showed you now, that's so-called destructive workflow. So the information is being dis destroyed. And the other one is non-destructive workflow. Or so if I convert it into, into a smart object, um, where was this here? It's already a smart object. So if I, it was like you select it and then right click, convert to, to smart object. Or so if I convert it to smart object, then, then the transformation is in a way applied, but um, the information is still stored somewhere. So I can always go back. If I kind of transform it back, I can go back. I can, information from the original image will still be used so when I, for example, scale back up. Or so that's um, just kind of a, one thing to know in theory, you should always want to work with uh, with these smart objects. Okay, I'll just undo a little bit here. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's it. So one of them is a smart object, the other one is not. And, um, and now I want to show you if you work with a smart object. Um, but this we can, again, work with, do with any layer, but um, with smart object, we can also reverse um, uh, things that we do. So I can change the perspective of this drawing. It will not be super successful on this one here, but I just want to show you a little bit how you can kind of go about it. Okay, so if you go to edit, there's something called perspective warp. And um, basically with the perspective warp, what I'm doing now, actually, let me just, I want to make this even better. So I want to get, create new layer, backgrounds. Okay, now I want to fill this background with a uh, black color. A black, just want to have something a bit nicer to work with. So if you go paint bucket and just click, you get black. And now you can just go down. Okay. So now my background, and maybe I can just lock it so it cannot be moved. And um, this is my drawing now, or so it's maybe a little bit nicer to see. Uh, and um, I go under image, uh, edit, perspective warp. And now what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to create a draw like a draw like a quad. Oh, okay. So actually, let me just do it again. Ah, don't apply. So uh, again, I apologize. Uh, perspective, uh, perspective warp. Okay, I think I have to do this phase if I just draw it like this. Okay, and then uh, I can use the spins and I can move them around. Okay, so basically, I'm trying to adjust this quad onto the sides of my image. So I'm trying to basically define, yeah, define a quad that, that aligns with, with, one, um, with one side of my building here. And yeah, unfortunately in this, <laughs> I realized only a little bit too late that, um, that yeah, this diagram is kind of very, yes, very this slight misalignments are so this, and, uh, this, this point here, if you go vertical, you don't get to this point here. So, but there's kind of a gap here or sort of a shift here. So you have to kind of just adjust it as best as you can. Okay, now I'm still here on the layout and I can create another quad. We kind of we go here, it kind of snaps onto the one that exists. And now I'm gonna create a second, second one. And here is just important. Yeah, again, maybe it's not the perfect. Uh, maybe this diagram is not like the perfect image to distort, but I just want to show you a little bit kind of how you go about. Of course, this should be parallel. So this is parallel, maybe like this, more or less. Oh, and uh, yeah, and then one on the top needs to go. So I need to go another one and layout. I think I can just draw it and maybe go like this. Okay. And uh, now it went here, and then the third one goes. Now I should find a point at the same height, which is a bit hard, but uh, it's maybe somewhere. See, I'll show you some other examples to see kind of, uh -huh, okay, see this point is here. This one is who knows where. Huh. Yeah, okay. So you kind of have to be a little bit smart how you do it. Okay, this one here and, ah. Uh, Okay, I will try to do it as best as I can. I think it has to be something like this. Mm. And then, ah. 
yeah, the problem is that these are not on the same height. Okay, so something like maybe, yeah, this Eisenman house is unfortunately a little bit, uh, okay, but I'll try to. Mm. Yeah, I actually tried to do this before and it kind of worked, but um, try now to just quickly go about it, maybe here, maybe here. And then these ones is not these ones are not aligned. I don't know why, but I'll I'll just leave it. Yeah, I'll leave, uh, I think you have to go deeper or something like that. Okay, I'll just leave it as it is for now. So you have to basically find these uh, these sort of edges, and then you press I think enter, or you can go uh, just click here on warp. And now, basically these quads they define the three sides of your um, three sides of your in a way um, object. Uh, perspective and the pixels are, are sort of glued to it. That means I can sort of, in a very rough way, start changing, changing the perspective. Or, and again, because we can see inside this cube, you can see inside this cube, uh, perspective doesn't really fit. So we get this sort of oblique perspective. Uh, but you can imagine if this would be sort of a flat texture, this would look like way, way better. I'll show you in some other examples. And yeah, the the parts that are outside of the cube, they they get also a bit um, distorted in sort of a weird uh, weird way. Okay, so but I can sort of now change, I can change this, um, yeah, I can change this uh, kind of sort of the view of this house, and you can do this to sort of roughly, in a way, change the perspective of your objects in an in an image if they're nicely cut out. I think if you press enter, then it's Kind of saved, but you can sort of revert because this is a smart object, has this sort of smart filter. And if you dispreview it, you see the original. This is the original, and this is sort of the this distorted one. Okay. Um, yeah, let me just save this, and I'll show you another example of this. And then maybe yeah, I'll show you a few few of these examples, and then we will only take a break, so we don't take a break now in between. So maybe uh, which one I had? Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I think I, maybe this one here. Let's try this one. So this is in Helsinki, a street front. So let's try to do something similar. Or so let's uh, this is the background. I can kind of go like this. Click on this small guy. Okay. Um, I can just call it wheel building. Uh, right click convert to smart object and it's not really necessary but this this enables you sort of to to revert the changes later okay so adjust the perspective and you decide you want to do something actually you want to do it a little bit different that you can <clears throat> then do it so again image or no, actually it's edit perspective warp and now you this building here on the image has three sides and maybe we define one side so here, let me just do it again, actually. Um, perspective warp. Okay, I want to go far up, something like this. Okay, and now I'm gonna draw, uh, draw another one, which maybe goes like this, up, and then maybe a third one goes like this. Okay, so I kind of drew sort of three sides of my quad, and now I want to align, I want to align them more. So it's kind of a, um, maybe this line is here, and um, okay, this line kind of. So I can't maybe see where it is, but you can you can try to, for example, align this line here with the facade, and uh, maybe it's something like this. Okay, and here it fits, and uh, maybe on the bottom, just make sure that it's vertical. If the yeah the vertical lines will say uh, vertical okay something like this maybe a bit more here okay you can also um, make some lines straight I think if you press shift and click on the line oh, or control click on the line ah ah no I think you have to do it when you go to warp okay let's just first uh, first align these so again this is more or less correct and on the top. I go somewhere like this. 
but basically I'm kind of looking at how, okay, same, same height, more or less, perfect. Kind of vertical, okay. Okay, so now I adjusted uh, these three sides. I go to warp you know, on the top. And I think, yeah, again, if I press control or shift, ah, yeah, if I press shift, I can sort of press shift, it'll kind of click, it'll sort of straighten this line. And also I think with the shift, um, I can kind of, I should be able to move these, yeah. So I made these two de co-dependent. Uh, when I press shift and click, okay. So this is now a vertical line, maybe shift click, here. oh, sorry. Uh, one, one gone, okay. So um, yeah, this vertical line, you can just kind of move it. And, um, and yeah, and then now you can actually, you can deform your, um, you can deform your facade or so I can, for example, I can maybe press shift here, shift here, okay. And I can deform my facade. Oh, maybe shift, I can remove it, okay. So I can basically deform my facade and give it a different, um, different perspective. I can completely kind of change the, um, I can sort of yeah, completely change the feel um, or the angles of this facade. Of course, what doesn't really work here, what doesn't really work here is the, um, um, I mean, the image is not really transformed or it's just sort of projected differently. Somehow it takes a bit longer for this to render. Um, I think my laptop is slowly dying. Okay. Um, you can see that kind of when you look at the windows, you can see that something is off, but uh, just because they sort of completely flipped, um, kind of basically rotate, uh, rotated it. Um, well, yeah, I rotated it. Oh, I kind of started moving too many things around. Um, yeah, you can sort of play around a little bit uh, with these ones. And this is how, again, in a very rough way, how you can sort of change the, um, uh, how you can change the perspective of your images. Uh, you can kind of play it basically almost as if it's, um, as if it's a paper, as if it's a kind of a model. And again, um, you would basically need to know now in this image, if you're putting this somewhere, you would have to know where your vanishing point is and um, you would have to, or always try to kind of align them uh, with your collage or so basically, basically as I'm doing this, the vanishing point is sort of uh, moving, it's shifting um, uh, uh, kind of on this image, I don't really see it, but it's shifting around and I have to then, if I collage this somewhere el else, I have to make sure that, um, I have to make sure that these then sort of fit, um, fit, fit where they need to be. Okay, I think if I press enter, to sort of apply changes, but because this is a smart object, you will kind of create, I can sort of always go back here. Yeah. So now this is my, of course, the, something weird happens here on the bottom, but I can maybe uh, try to change that, but I kind of completely changed how the, how the corner of this building looks like. Um, yeah, if I click here, I can just go back to how it was. So this is the original, and here is the transform one, original, Transform so I can basically um, I can yeah, completely change kind of how the how the street front in this case sort of looks like and you can imagine if I have a cutout and if I yeah just kind of do the floor or the the pavement here uh, I in a way completely change the yeah completely change this this guy okay let's maybe um, perspective what's the name of this place. The old skiffer. Okay, nice with that. Perspective. The old skiffer. Okay, and um, mm -mm, uh, that's basically it. Let's see if there's maybe something. Those are two examples. Uh -huh. Yeah, let's actually let's do just one, one more. So just to kind of reinforce this. Let's do it here. 
uh, sort of something similar. Um, let's try to kind of turn this into a sort of corner street. So this is again somewhere from, I think this is, I guess, uh, possibly Suomen Lina, but hard to say. I can, again, right click here, convert to smart object. Then I go to edit, perspective warp. Then I draw one and I come of course exactly here. And then I draw another one and kind of merge it. Perfect. So down, down. Okay. Um, and if I go to warp, Okay, now um, and now I made sure because I have again two two of these. I made sure that one of them at least uh, can stay. Um, so this one can go kind of down. This one can go here, maybe like this. Oh, actually, uh -huh, uh -huh, okay, yeah, okay. It's, I said it should be undistorted, but uh, yeah, I can kind of. Turn this basically into some kind of a um, street front, so corner street front, and again, uh, these lines they meet into a in a vanishing point. So if I'm putting this as a composition somewhere, I have to make sure that uh, these then sort of meet ex exactly on the on a, on a horizon uh, of this new composition that I have, and I can of course do this sort of very very bad if I'm not really that careful. And again, I think I can just do shift and press this one and kind of straightens it, shift, okay, enter. So you can always straighten some lines because yeah, in this perspective, sort of the vertical lines would stay vertical because we don't have, um, we don't have the perspective shortening, you know, in that case, okay. And I can maybe even just duplicate this layer and say duplicate layer, okay. Uh, and I can go, you know, image, mm -hmm. Which actually edit. I think now it's, everything is a bit uh, slower because of this uh, smart objects. Edit, transform, uh, flip horizontal. So the one that I copied, I'll just flip it and put control and aha. Uh, uh -huh. Okay. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, there's uh, <laughs> something. A bit weird happening here on the left. I'll just delete that. Okay, okay. I kind of somehow, yeah, I can sort of um, deconstruct these. Or I can just, I think, go back and say raster as layer. This will basically destroy this smart layer. Raster as layer. Okay. So now I kind of have a, you know, uh, this is a right side and this is a left side. Okay, so somehow you have to be careful. Okay, it's just like two of them. And now they are sort of exactly more or less in the middle. Okay, this is maybe again, not the best. Um, uh, not the best one, but sort of I can have two of these and I can kind of create something, something else in between. Also, I, I, I again went from a, I again went from a sort of a, um, a completely kind of unfast facade to um, to sort of uh, basically create a street from scratch in this in this case just uh, basically bending things a little bit in perspective. Okay, save as just save this as again not old skiffer, but I'll call it perspective. Okay, and that's that's basically it. So. I'm going to show you this perspective a bit because um, these are very powerful tools. They enable you to work with pers perspective. Again, if you know the rules and if you know how the tools, how the tools work in Photoshop, you can work, um, I think, in a very precise way. And also, you know, it's a kind of very powerful workflow. I mean, here, you know, you don't really see the, where the kind of transition almost happens. You can maybe blend them a little bit more. Um, and yeah, because of course the ground, uh, here in that sense, kind of ground would be a little bit different than, than the vertical um, 
vertical surfaces. So you would kind of maybe if you invest just a little bit attention on the ground, you would maybe, yeah, you could make it kind of almost uh, uh, almost indistinguishable from sort of a real street. 